Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey and in today's video I want to talk about color. Color is such a broad topic and you could easily dedicate an entire YouTube channel to understanding color and color theory, but for the sake of this video we're going to focus on how color pertains to your wardrobe. So we're going to break things down into very basic categories and then some very easy ways you can identify the colors that are going to make you feel your best and work the best for your overall lifestyle and your wardrobe. So when it comes to a cohesive color palette for your closet, you can think of color in two ways neutral, which are your base colors. Those are going to make up the most items in your wardrobe, and those tend to be white, black, camel, gray, navy, very neutral basic colors. And then accent colors, and accent colors are really going to be the things that you swap in and out for seasons or maybe personal preference or your own individual coloring, and they're things that really allow you to have a lot of fun with your wardrobe. Other thing that's important to understand when it comes to colors for your wardrobe is that colors are broken into two categories, warm and cool, and typically speaking, a cohesive wardrobe will have all warm or all cool at one given time. The reason behind that, the logic, is that warm goes with or is compatible with warm colors, and it can be a little tricky to mix and match cool and warm colors. Now, it's definitely possible, just like anything that I'm going to discuss in this video, there are always rules that can be broken, and you can do whatever you want. These are just general principles when it comes to color. Now, when it comes to choosing a cohesive color palette for your own personal wardrobe, there are three basic methods that I want to go over. Before we break down these three methods in more detail, I want to throw a little caveat in here, and that is that color should be fun. Just like your wardrobe, you should use colors and wear colors that make you feel great. And if you feel fantastic in colors that don't suit you, then wear them. I very frequently wear colors that aren't right for me in my coloring and my skin tone, and I do, them be I do that because I love those colors. So also know that you can always make things look good with makeup. So don't feel like you can never wear red, for example, because someone's told you that it doesn't suit you. You can wear red and you can wear it with confidence. The important thing here is to use these tips that I'm going to share as tips and things that you can use to better understand color and maybe understand why you don't like wearing certain things, but never as a means to tell you that you can't wear certain things. So method one is to wear universally flattering colors. These are the colors that in theory are the perfect balance of warm and cool, so they technically should complement every skin tone. According to many color theory experts, the universal colors are black, pure white, blush pink with some debate, eggplant, teal, and true red. For the red, you have to ensure that it isn't too red or too orange for it to be a truly universally flattering red. And likewise with white, you have to make sure that it's not too yellow or too blue. Method number two is to choose colors that complement your skin's undertone. So in order to use this approach, we need to understand what our undertone is. So I'm going to run through it very quickly, give some very top line tips on how you can identify your own undertone. And then I'm going to link over to my blog where I've included examples of the certain colors that complement each undertone. The first part of this is understanding the difference between skin tone and undertone. So your skin tone is the surface color of your skin, the depth of your skin color, and that can change depending on your age or your environment, whether you have a tan or no tan. Skin tone is typically broken into four main categories, fair, light, medium, and dark. And as you can see by these examples on the screen, you can pretty easily tell which of these categories you fall into. Now, undertone, on the other hand, is what lies beneath your skin or underneath the top layer. So it doesn't relate to the overall depth of your skin color, but instead relates to the color that kind of whispers underneath the surface of your skin. So this is typically broken into four main categories. We have warm, cool, neutral, and then olive. And olive's kind of a wild card because you can be a cool olive or a warm olive. That's a lot more information than we have time for today, but I am going to give you some tips on how you can identify your undertone if you're unsure of what that is. There are three main ways to determine your skin's undertone, and the first is to do the vein test. So in order to do this, just flip your arm over and look at your veins. So if your veins appear blue, then you're cool toned. If your veins appear green, then you're warm toned or potentially olive. And if they are a little bit of both, then you're neutral or potentially olive. 
The next way to determine your undertone is with a jewelry test. So for this, you take a gold piece of jewelry and a silver piece of jewelry, hold them up to your face, and see which complements you the best, which makes you look alive, make, which makes your eyes look really white and your teeth look really bright, and your face and your features look nice and soft. If the gold jewelry works the best for you, then you're warm toned. If the silver jewelry works the best for you, then you're cool toned. And if both work, then you're either neutral or potentially olive. And the last method is the towel test. Just like the name suggests, you hold a bright white towel up to your face, preferably also pull your hair completely out of your face, and see what your skin looks like. So this will really help bring out the colors in your skin and your undertone. You can also do this with a pure white shirt. Just make sure that it's very, very white and it's not too yellow or too blue. And then notice the colors that you see. If you're cool toned, you'll see a lot of pink. If you're warm toned, you'll see a lot of yellow. If you're neutral, you'll see kind of a middle. You'll kind of be muted out in a way. And then if you're olive, you'll be able to see a very clear green. That is what distinguishes olive skin from every other undertone. It has a very clear green running through it. So it's something that I had to really train my eye at, but as soon as I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. And also, if you typically have a really hard time coming up with your undertone or the colors that work for you, or you have a hard time finding cosmetics that suit you, you very likely could be olive toned and just don't know it. Olive tone does not only apply to people with medium or dark complexions, it can be people that are very pale as well. So I'll put some really cool links in the description box all about olive skin and I think they'll be very helpful to at least one of you out there who may not know that you're olive. And the last way to compile your cohesive color palette is to wear any color you want. <laughs> Throw out all of these rules, don't listen to anyone, and wear what you want when you want. And there you have it. That's a very quick crash course in color 101 and how you can use this information to hone in a color palette that's really going to work for you and your wardrobe. So I'm going to leave you with an example palette that I've put together using everything we've discussed. So it has a base of mostly neutrals and then two accent colors. And for the, for the sake of example, I've chosen two universal accent colors. The blue will often be represented in denim and it's something that I use in my own wardrobe and then pale pink because I really like that color. So I'd love to know in the comments down below what your personal color palette looks like. Do you really like having a unique color palette that suits you and something that really helps set your wardrobe apart? Do you have one or two colors that you always wear and a few that you never wear? Definitely let me know. I would love to have a conversation in the comment section all about color and how it makes us feel and complement our wardrobes. And like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.